so today we will see about the regulation of the salivary gland and our salivary glands are majorly regulated only through the nervous mechanism but when you consider the respiratory process it is regulated by means of nervous mechanism as well as several chemoreceptors also had some kind of influence towards our respiratory process but as far as our salivary glands are concerned it is regulated only by means through the nervous mechanism i will write that it is regulated by nervous mechanism regulated only through nervous mechanisms and through autonomic nervous system so i'll write ans here which denotes the autonomic nervous system and first we will look about the influence of the parasympathetic fibers towards our various salivary glands so first one we will see the influence of parasympathetic fibers on our submandibular and sublingual glands and so now we will talk about the preganglionic fibers which has so initially we will see a picture here the so the parasympathetic fibers initially arise from the superior salivary nucleus which is over here which is present at the pons so the preganglionic fibers arise from the pons and they travel to the nervous intermediates of vreisberg so we can see another short version of the influence of parasympathetic fibers over here this is from the superior salivary nucleus over here and the nerves run from the superior salivary nucleus through the nervous intermediates of vreisberg this intermediate nerve is a branch of our facial nerve so from the nervous intermediates of the vreisberg the preganglionic fibers run towards the geniculate ganglion the geniculate ganglion is present in the facial canal of our head so through this geniculate ganglion the preganglionic fibers pass towards the main channel of our facial nerve and then leaves through the cauda tympani which is also a branch of our facial nerve and from there it reaches the lingual nerve and the lingual nerve ultimately leads to the submaxillary ganglion so that is where the preganglionic fibers ends and from the submaxillary ganglion the nervous supply to the submaxillary and the sublingual glands the postganglionic fibers supply these glands so the general pathway for this nervous mechanism is it starts from the pons and travels through the facial nerves and ultimately leads to the lingual nerve and then to the submandibular ganglion and then the submandibular ganglion provides the postganglionic fibers which supply the sublingual and the submandibular glands and the main function of this parasympathetic nervous fibers is they help in increased secretion of saliva with large quantity of water and a decreased ionic contents so that is how it has an influence towards the salivary secretions and now we will write short notes of how it the pathway of the sympathetic parasympathetic fibers towards the submandibular and the sublingual glands so initially the preganglionic fibers start from pons that is through the salivary nucleus and 
from the salivary nucleus it runs towards the intermediate nerve that is also called as the intermediate of Riesberg and from the intermediate of Riesberg which is a part of our facial nerve it reaches the geniculate ganglion and from the geniculate ganglion the nerves travel towards the coda tympani which is also a branch of facial nerve that originates from the taste buds coda tympani and from the coda tympani it travels towards the lingual branch of the trigeminal nerve towards the lingual nerve and from the lingual nerve the preganglionic fibers ends at the submaxillary ganglion and from the submaxillary ganglion and the submaxillary ganglion are also called as the submandibular ganglions and from the submandibular ganglions the postganglionic fibers supply the two glands that is the sublingual and the submandibular glands